In this video, we're going to talk to you about keyword research. And yes, we're actually even going to make keyword research as easy as possible because it does not need to be a complex thing. Some people will talk about a lot of different formulas and this and that, the other and considerations, but we've truly boiled this down to the simplest process that it can be. And keyword research, it's, it's really like mind reading. It's like getting to peer right into the intentions and desires and wants and minds of your target market and audience. That's one of the coolest things about doing business on the internet is it all starts with a search. I mean, think about it. Anytime you go find something on the internet, you're searching on Google, or you're searching on some other site to find the thing that you want. And so if you can look at the things that your target market are actually searching for, it's like being able to peer into their mind and the things that they want most. So let's go Go ahead and talk about why is keyword research so important well the number one research is as we just kind of talked about you get to understand your market's exact wants this makes sure that you can assume as little as possible. You may think you know what your niche is or what your people in your niche want, but these numbers will help you get as close to the truth as you can get at this point. The second thing is that you don't waste any time. You don't waste time chasing after an idea or chasing after a niche or chasing after a topic that you think is going to be popular. Just But then by looking at the search numbers, you find out, oh, it's actually this other thing that more people are looking for. Yeah, I've seen this quite a few times, but I can promise you that you do not want to waste six months on a niche with all the ups and downs and the risk and the work and the fear to overcome only to find out that it's all for nothing. Now, keyword research makes it so that's less of a possibility, as, as, as little of a possibility as it, it, it can possibly be. The third thing is that it's going to help you attract the most targeted visitors. The more targeted and the more relevant you are to the kinds of people that you want to attract to your business, the easier time you're going to have of keeping them around your site and actually converting them into buyers when the time comes. So attracting those people by focusing on the actual things that they're searching for is going to help you get results a lot faster. Look, in the end, we want targeted visitors, people that actually want the information and or products that we have. We want a perfect match or as close to that as possible. Keyword research definitely makes that more of a possibility. So what are the exact objectives that we're going for as we go into our keyword research so we know what we're looking for? Well, first thing, most importantly, it's going to help you narrow down your niche. You might start with something really broad like pets or really broad like dog training. But then by doing keyword research, you might find out that you want to talk specifically about dog training schools or about different methodologies of dog training based on what you see people are looking for most. The second objective we have is to find content ideas. So for instance, with one of my niche sites, which is all about how to start podcasting, I'm going to get a lot of ideas by seeing, okay, are people searching for maybe podcasting gear or podcasting software? Maybe they're searching for how to podcast with GarageBand on the Mac. And as I see those laid out, then that really gives me a good idea of, okay, I should write articles and all these things. So I start showing up in the search engines for them. Yeah, and it's funny, one of the things we hear all the times is, what am I going to write about uh, in, in a year? Or what am I going to write about when I start? I'm not real sure what I'm going to write about. Well, the great thing about this is you can actually let the numbers easily tell you what to write about. And we'll show you that in, in just a minute. Now, the third thing is it's going to help you choose an actual brand name and web address for your site. Because often if you choose a primary keyword that you want to focus on, like with our brand, we chose internet business as a primary keyword. And then we came up with a brand name that was around that. So we named our show and our brand Internet Business Mastery. And we came up with a web address that's internetbusinessmastery.com. And there's all kinds of advantages that go along with that because it makes it very clear what your brand is about. It helps you actually rank higher and get more exposure through the search engines. So so this keyword research is going to help you dial in on that as well. Now, before we go further into keyword research, let's just talk about a few mistakes that people make so you can definitely avoid these mistakes. First of all, people make the mistake of just assuming what it is that their market wants most. You know, Even if you have been a member of your target market and think you have an idea of what your market wants, you definitely want to check that against actual numbers. So again, you don't waste any time. Yeah. Now with just a little bit of research, I could have found out right off that macrame pants would not be a hit. If only Yeah, I that, that was a pretty shameful sight there, Sterling. I, you know, I tried to warn you, but it was just too late. <laughs> if I just knew all of this, then... like that's what people want. I'm surely they're durable. They're easy. They're yeah. Sadly, they're see-through. <laughs> oh, macrame. Not to mention itchy as well. <laughs> yeah. 
The second common mistake that people make is targeting phrases that are far too broad. So let's give an example of this. For instance, if you went for just tennis, well, tennis is a huge topic, a huge niche. Are you talking about how to play tennis? Are you talking about tennis gear? Are you talking about where to go to, to see tennis games? Are you talking about how to become a pro tennis player? Just a huge number of different specific niches within that. So a much better thing would be to do some research, go through the process of seeing what it is you want to focus on more, most, and to narrow it down to something like beginner tennis tips as your primary keyword that you're focusing on. So if you go too broad, you're going to find that it's too much competition and it's it's just too hard to really attract the ideal people that, you, that, that you're wanting to work with. And that brings us to the third mistake that people make, and that is targeting phrases that are far too competitive. Going too broad makes it too competitive. But also, you know, clearly there's just some things that are going to be going after a, t a, a phrase like airline tickets or airline flights. Okay, you've got a lot of huge brands, huge airlines. Or car <laughs> insurance. Car, car insurance, another one. Yeah. yeah, it'd be much better to be very specific niche within travel than to go something broad like airline flights. So you got to pay attention to that as you go as well. All right, one more thing we need to talk about, and they're going to dive right into the keyword tool, and that is this idea of the long tail. Perhaps this is a phrase you heard of before. We're going to make this very quick and as simple as possible. Here's a diagram right here off of the SEO Moz website, seomoz.org, very popular search engine related site, lots of great information uh, there. And basically, this is a diagram just uh, showing. You know, over here on the left-hand side, these are the words that get millions or hundreds of thousands of searches. So the most popular words, the top 100 words uh, over here on the far left side, and then the top 500 words, words that get tens of thousands and 100,000 searches in a month, uh, down to the top 10,000 words that get, you know, thousands of searches every month. These are the most... Uh, I guess you could say the most popular in the fact that you know they individually they get the most searches, but these are going to be highly competitive. These are going to be not very targeted. Things like tennis or things like dogs or things like insurance. A lot of one one word phrases you know fall over on this left side. Well, the truth of the matter is is that it's this long tail. All these millions and millions of search phrases that get entered into places like Google every day. Seventy percent of those searches fall all the way out here in the long tail, and so if you try to focus on words over here like insurance and dogs, far too competitive, far too broad. You're not going to be getting targeted people to your site. But if you focus out here on long tail words, a lot less competition, a lot more targeted people who, that you know their exact intent. And so you're able to serve exactly what that need or want is that they have the moment that they hit your site. You're going to be a lot more likely than to convert that person into a repeat visitor, into somebody who's actually going to buy from your business. So we're going to talk about how to find these long tail keywords. And so rather than going after those one or two really big popular keywords go after a whole bunch of little long tail keywords that all adds up and next thing you know you're getting hundreds of thousands of uh, you know searches and visits coming to your site as well so just a quick example of this you know for my site about how to, to podcast a fat head example so at the left end they call that the fat head of the of the diagram here that would be a word like podcasting. Going to be a lot more competitive, a lot more vague as to what the intent is. Is this people who want to know how to podcast? Is this people who want to listen to podcasts or just want to know what podcasting is? Are they researching? Are they actually trying to you know, learn something? Are they actually ready to buy something? Who knows with a phrase like that versus long tail phrases. So phrases that fall out here on this right hand side of this diagram would be like podcasting tips or how to podcast or how to start a podcast less competition, a lot more specific on what the intent of these people are, a lot easier for me to be able to specifically hit exactly what it is that they're looking at. So you want to hang out over here in the long tail and not over on the left in the fat head. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and dive into the actual keyword, ad, the Google AdWords keyword tool, which is the tool of choice. It's free to use, and it's something that makes it very easy to dive in and look at what is it that your market is looking for. So to do that, come here to Google, and let's just go ahead and look for Google keyword tool. And you're gonna see right up here at the top, this AdWords, Google AdWords keyword tool is what we're looking for. So bring up this keyword tool right here. Come, make sure you click on this keyword ideas tab. Uh, this is what you're going to be wanting to work with. Um, come over here and switch from broad to exact match. We're not going to go into what the differences are here, but the reason you want exact is this is going to give you the most precise numbers. Yes, these numbers are going to be lower, but they're going to be more realistic as to exactly how many people are searching because all it's going to show you is only people who are searching for that exact phrase as you typed it in. 
All right, so let's see, Sterling. What are some ideas of phrases for my podcasting site uh, that we could type in here to see what kinds of things people might be searching for related to podcasting? Profitable podcasting. Okay. How to make money with podcasting. Podcasting. Advertising with podcasting. Podcasting. Probably how to podcast. Uh, Advertising. Let's see. Maybe podcast advertising uh podcasting gear anyway you get the idea and i'd probably just sit here and make a list of 10 to 20 if i could uh, and then what we want to do is we want to come down here and and just go ahead and click on the search And what's going to happen is this is going to go out and find all the different phrases that are related to these search phrases that google thinks that people are also searching for if they're interested in these things and so it makes this list down here these up at the top are the five search terms that i entered down here at the bottom are 430 more that it went and found now one quick tip here is make sure that you are logged in and have an adwords account and log into your google account with your adwords account because you'll be able to get up to 800 results rather than if you're not logged in to a google account with an adwords uh, account you'll only be able to get a hundred at a time all right, so let's come over here and uh, we're going to sort this by clicking on local monthly searches. I, yeah, I was just going to say I wanted to mention that I see a lot of people mentioning you got to focus on the uh, global monthly searches. And I was going to say, can you explain to everybody why we chose local instead? Yeah, I mean, it's tempting to go, oh, yeah, I want to, oh, look at those higher numbers under global. And the reason for this is global is, well, it's going for the whole world, all, all different countries and things like that. However, my podcasting site is going to be, it's hosted on a web host that's in the US. It's also got a domain name, a .com domain name that's a US domain name as opposed to .co.uk or something like that, you know, for, for in, the, in the UK. So it's a lot more likely that I'm going to rank higher for searches within the US. Now I might rank for places outside the US as well, but really this is going to be the more conservative estimate because it might be further down the road that I might start ranking in other English speaking countries. But at first, this is going to give me the more conservative realistic number right here. Um, so that's why I like to stick with those things. Now we'll notice that there's a whole lot of actually kind of broad, really unrelated uh, terms. And when, if you see that going on, which is often going to be the case, you might want to come back up here and click on this. It says only show ideas closely related to my search terms. So that's going to narrow it down even more for us. Let's click search again. All right. Now we've got uh, much better, much more tightly uh, focused words, things like how to make a podcast, how to podcast, how to start a podcast. Let's go ahead and bring up, uh, I'm going to Google how to podcast and my site is right up here at the top. Uh, now, as of recording this, this is the same design that I had going back uh, to 2005 when I first put it up. By the time you watch this, it's possible this design will have changed. But you'll notice I chose how to podcast as my primary keyword. Um, now, back then in 2005, that was the most common thing searched for. Interestingly enough, it looks like now how to make a podcast is uh, actually a little more popular than that. So if I were starting over now, I would likely choose... Uh, how to make a podcast as my primary keyword. And I would try to get a domain URL like how to make a podcast.com or something like that. Uh, Sterling, so why does, why does that help to have a web address like that? Uh, how to make a podcast.com or macramepants.com? Well, of course, it's what what it's going to do is in the actual rankings on Google, um, it's going to be yet another thing that gives you that Google juice or that you get more credit for your site and thus higher in the rankings on Google. They'll see it as more relevant and have the possibility of putting you in like in your case at number one. Absolutely. Yeah, it gives you definitely a leg up when it comes to ranking. And then you'll see that gets bolded right here. So and, and obviously, if somebody searches for how to podcast, and they see it in my URL, they see it right here, that you know, they're, they're going to be more likely to click. So um, for all those reasons, we liked if we can, we suggest trying to find a URL, a domain name that has that primary keyword. Now, you know, an example of that URL thing that I was talking about there is with Internet Business being our primary keyword, we came up with internetbusinessmastery.com. Internetbusiness.com was already taken at this time, but by simply adding a word to the front or back, you can kind of you know, make that work for you as well. So how do we use these keywords here? Well, like we already said, naming your brand, name, coming up with a web address, but then now also I can look at this and go, well, here are like the 10 or 15 first articles I should write. I should write an article about how to podcast. I should write an article 
about how to podcast on a PC specifically. I should write, a, write an article on, on um, how to publish a podcast, so actually how do you put it online. I should write an article about how to make a video podcast. Now clearly I might skip one like, uh, so there was one in here, how to download a podcast. That's not my target audience. So we're looking for ones that are still relevant to the people that I'm trying to reach. This is a podcast consumer or listener or viewer as opposed to somebody who's trying to start their own uh, podcast, how to record a podcast. So these are all really great phrases for me uh, to target. So just a couple criteria to keep in mind when you're looking for those first phrases that you want to target and that primary phrase that's going to be a part of your brand. If you can, look for something that has 800 or higher local monthly searches. Now you might be thinking, hey, that's not that many. Um, but look at this, you know, how to podcast. That's my primary keyword right here. And it only gets 1,300 local monthly searches. But my site is now built up to where it gets 20 to 30,000 searches a month. And or visitors, 20 to 30,000 visitors a month, even though you know my primary keyword it seems to have a small amount right there. And why is that? Well, that goes all the way back to what we were talking about earlier with the long tail. I've got a whole bunch of long tail keywords, a whole bunch of these different phrases that I've targeted on my site and used in articles and written articles about, and that's all added up to a good amount of traffic. So don't be frightened off by like, oh my gosh, the numbers seem so low. We do recommend that your primary keyword have above 800 if possible. That's a good rule of thumb. But then even for other articles, even if it's only 170 or 73 or some of these lower ones, again, it's all going to add up in the end. Now, there's one quick note about competition. And that is, you know, how do you know if a phrase is going to be too competitive to go after? Well, there's quite a few different factors to look at for deciding how competitive it might be to try to rank on the first page of Google for a particular phrase. And I say first page because that's where most of the clicks come from. Or people just look at results on the first page. But one of the really easy ways, without getting in too much depth on that, one of the really easy ways to know if a phrase is going to be too competitive or not uh, one of the really easy ways to avoid phrases that are too competitive is to focus mostly on phrases that are three words or more. You know, a lot of those fat head at the left hand side of the chart type words that we we're talking about earlier that are too competitive and too broad, a lot of those are one word and two word phrases. So if you just focus on phrases that are three words or more, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. Now, don't be confused by this column right here that says competition. This actually has nothing to do with competition for how easily you can rank for the keyword. This has to do with how many people are advertising in AdWords and that's not what we're working with. So it's actually not relevant to what we're doing right here. So just ignore that column um, altogether. The only reason you want to look at that is if you are either trying to make money with AdSense ads on your site or trying to bid on ads through AdWords for placing ads. So that's what you want to do right now is spend a little time, type in if you can, uh, 5, 10, even as many as 20 words up here. Make sure you've got exact match checked right there. Make sure you got this box checked right there. Sort them by the most popular local monthly searches and just start writing these down, choosing one to be the focus for your main brand, the title and the URL for your website, and then choosing 10 others that you can get started for the first 10 articles that you'll create for a, a, a niche-based site. And that's how you can use keyword research, again, to make sure you're not wasting any time, you're pegging the wants and needs of your market head on, and you're gonna get maximum exposure in the search engines.